Hi there, YouTube. Uh, so I haven't really made much content on this channel in a very long time. Um, but uh, I was doing a bunch of research into uh, vampires this morning, and I got kind of really hooked on the concept of, of this old book, um, and I wanted to talk about it. Uh, this is going to be super off the cuff. I do have notes, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not going to edit this video. I'm literally going to shoot it in my car on my lunch break at work um, because I can't get this fucking story out of my head. So uh, the story that we're talking about is called The Vampire, um, and it's written by John Polidori back in the early 1800s. I think it's like 18... I should have written this down, but it's like 1819, um, 1814, something like that, right around that time. Um, and basically, uh, it is great. <laughs> Um, this book came out, uh, before, like, 50 years before Dracula, before Carmilla, um, like, it was considered, uh, it is now considered, like, the, f uh, the first, like, it's the prototypical, uh, modern vampire novel, um, like, gothic vampire horror novel, um, it kind of brought together all of the elements that, like, would later become seminal to the genre, and it kind of laid them out long before Dracula, which I think is really cool, um, so the story is about, and I'll talk about the publishing of it later because it's also, that's also a really cool thing. I keep looking here, but I need to look here, or maybe it's here. I don't know. I don't usually record stuff on this phone. So uh, the story is about uh, this guy named Aubrey, um, and he's like 18. Uh, he's like an orphan, but he has these guardians, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. So he meets this guy called Lord Ruthven, and Ruthven is totally not a vampire, I swear. Um... And basically they hit it off and they decide that they're going to uh, do what all single, independently wealthy uh, young gentlemen do. Uh, and they're going to travel Europe together because that's what you do. Um, so they, they go on this trip together. They're having a great time. Except that Ruthven is kind of an asshole, it seems. Um, and then later, uh, Aubrey starts getting all of these letters from his friends back home. And it turns out that in addition to being an asshole... Ruthven is also, like, a total creep, and he, is, he was, like, secretly seducing all of the young ladies of the city. Um, so, uh, Aubrey, in a surprisingly cool move, is like, hey, dude, that behavior is super not cool, and I don't think we can hang out anymore. Um, so they totally part ways. Uh, Aubrey, good guy. I'm, I'm, I'm here for him. Um, so Aubrey continues his travels, and he ends up meeting this girl named Ianthe, and she is super sweet, and he completely falls in love with her. Um, he's, like, ready to marry her and, like, be with her, even though she's poor and she's low social standing, but he's, he's completely in love with her. Um, and Yanthi is super into ghost stories. She loves, like, supernatural scary stuff, and she tells him all of these local legends about vampires, um... And basically she's like, yeah, vampires, they're super spooky and they're totally real. I swear everybody I know has stories of vampires. They're totally real. And he's like, okay, honey. And she's like, no, 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 no. I swear they're super real. They, they drink the blood of young women to stay alive. And, uh, they, and I swear they look exactly like, and she describes to count it or not count, uh, Lord Ruthven. She's like, it's, it's totally Lord. It's just a hundred percent Lord Ruthven. And <laughs> Aubrey thinks about this and he's like, hmm. That's weird. Uh, that'll probably never come up again. <laughs> um, so uh, then poor Anthe gets murdered horrifically uh, and Aubrey finds the body. Uh, and he is so totally distraught by this. Uh, it, he even finds like the murder weapon and it's like this weird dagger. Um, so he's so totally distraught and traumatized by the loss and by finding a dead body and this whole thing um, that he like falls totally ill. Um, and while he's convalescing, uh, guess who should show up again, but Lord Ruthven. And he, Lord Ruthven is like super apologetic. He's basically making like YouTube apology videos about his past behavior. He's like, I know I was a shithead. I did a lot of shitty things, but you know what? You're my friend and I want to be here for you now in your moment of need. And Aubrey's like, yeah, that's cool, man. So when did you get to town? And Lord Ruthven's like, ah, the night your, your girlfriend got murdered. And we're like, oh, this is weird. This is sure, that'll never come up again. Um, so they, they make amends and they travel together again after Aubrey is well again. Um, and then as they're traveling together, suddenly bandits attack. Oh no, what will we do? Um, and then in the course of the, the bandit attack, Ruthven gets shot and he's like dying. He's on his deathbed. 
and he he's like lying there and he's like uh, Aubrey man I need you to do me a favor man and Aubrey's like yeah sure whatever 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 you want you're dying like of course your last wish tell me and uh, Ruthen's like you can't tell anybody about me like you can't tell them that you know me you you can't tell them uh, I'm super dying you can't tell them that like that I died you can't tell them that I was an asshole just don't tell don't tell anybody anything for a year and a day you can't tell anyone anything and Aubrey's like that's kind of a really weird thing to ask but like I guess sure and Ruthen's like no you gotta swear you gotta swear it you have to promise me that you'll you'll do this even if like things get really weird and there's some seriously weird extenuating circumstances that might make you want to tell people you still can't tell anybody you have to promise swear to me swear to god swear swear to whatever will swear on your pokemon cards and like just don't you can't tell anybody about me and Aubrey's like, okay, fine, whatever. If, if I if I tell anybody about you, I'll burn my Pokemon cards. Fine, whatever. Just like, you good? Are we good? And then Ruthen's like, ah, oh, that's great. <laughs> and he dies. Um, literally dies laughing. <laughs> He's such a fucking weirdo. <laughs> uh, and the, the guy who wrote the, read the audiobook gave him this wild accent for no reason his accent is not mentioned at any point in the book but he gives him an accent and this is the only part because it's an older book where like it's there there's not a lot of dialogue in the narrative generally i keep looking at the screen here i need to be looking at the viewfinder it's more natural but there's no there's not a lot of actual like dialogue a lot of the dialogue is just described in narration like they'll be like oh he said that blah 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 but it's one of the only lines of dialogue that you actually get from ruthven and it's just this wild out of nowhere. He just suddenly has this accent and it's great. Um, so uh, anyway, um, Ruth then dies. Uh, and then mysteriously, when they're like going over the details of like how to bury him and whatnot, uh, his body goes missing. Weird. I'm sure that'll never come up again. <laughs> um, Aubrey go ends up like going through his stuff because he's like putting his stuff away and whatever. And he finds... Um, a bunch of weird weapons, like really deadly weapons. And in among here, he finds a sheath and the sheath is like weird. And he compares it to the blade that he found that murdered his girlfriend and they match. And he's like, whoa, that's weird. I'm sure that'll never come up again. <laughs> he doesn't ever seem to come to the logical conclusions ever. He's, he like presents the evidence. He's like, whoa, this is a really weird thing. Oh, well. <laughs> Um, so after all of this, Aubrey decides that enough is enough and he decides to go home. Um, and he goes home, he hangs out with his sister, everything is great, but then he starts seeing Ruthven around, like, at parties and stuff. And he doesn't even know if he's imagining it, um, he's not sure if he's really there, if he's a ghost, if he's, like, if he's come back to, from the dead, he, he doesn't know what's going on. And he wants to tell everybody about it, he wants to be like, yo, d what the fuck, Ruthven is here. But he promised. And I mean, what about his Pokemon cards? <laughs> so he can't tell anybody. And he's freaking out about this. And like a year passes of him just freaking out and everybody being like, dude, you really seem like you're not okay. And he's like, I'm fine. I just, I just really, I just really need a year and a day to pass. I just need this time limit to pass. Cause he just, just, he's freaking out. Um, and it's a promise, you know, you keep a promise. <laughs> um, so he's like totally losing it and his guardians decide that he's he's completely lost it and they're really worried about him and they think that he's super sick and so they lock him up for his own protection um and then he finds out that uh his sister is getting married to this guy the the earl of marsden and he's like oh cool an earl wow my sister she's marrying well in the world good for her and then it turns out that the earl of marsden is Lord Ruthven. Bum, bum, bum. Talk about a fucking soap opera plot twist. Um, so he's like, you can't marry this guy. And she's like, I'm, I'm super in love with this guy. He's great. Um, but, uh, so, okay. I'm losing my train of thought. Um, so she is like all ready to marry him. And Aubrey is, oh, by the way, the sister never gets a name. It just so you know, she's, Aubrey is their family name. So he's called Aubrey and she's called Miss Aubrey. <laughs> Sure, old books, it's great. Um, so uh, she goes off to get married and he's like locked up and uh, he tries to write her a letter and he gives it to the doctor to give to her to be like, yo, your fiance is a fucking weirdo. I can't tell you about it. I Just give me six hours. Just delay the wedding by six hours 
And the physician's like, yeah, this is going to upset the bride. Uh, I'm not going to give it to her. Um, and then Aubrey dies, <laughs> like, in despair. Um, and then they get married. Uh, Miss Aubrey and, and Ruthven get, get married. And surprise, surprise, he murders her on their wedding night and drains her of all her blood because, shocker, he's been a vampire this whole time. I know. There's no way we could have possibly seen this coming. Um, so that's the story of The Vampire, which is like the sem the seminal uh, vampire novel um, written by John Polidori, I think. Uh, and you might be asking, like, where did this book come from? Like, who is this guy? What is the oh, the beginning of this? And I think it's kind of cool. Um, it's not really like that weird a story, but I really enjoy it. Um, so uh, if you're familiar with Frankenstein, uh, you you are probably aware, potentially aware, that um, it was written uh, as like a challenge for these three authors who were hanging out. It's Mary Shelley and Lord Byron and some other guy, his name I don't remember. Um, and they were hanging out uh, in the, on this rainy night and they were like, who can tell the, the scariest scary story? And so she ends up going off and writing Frankenstein. And the other guy, I don't know, he writes whatever. And Lord Byron ends up writing this short story, um, which he doesn't, he calls it like a fragment or like a spooky story fragment, um, which he never finishes. Um, but it's just this short story, uh, that is about this guy who meets this other guy and they travel together in Europe and the, and then the, the other guy dies and he never finishes the story. Um, but, uh, da -da -da -da. uh, sorry, my brain just shut off for a second. I'm not editing this video, so I have to like make sure that I, I keep going. Um, so Lord Byron, uh, his physician was John Polidori and he told John about it. And he's like, Hey, yeah, here's this story. And here's how I was planning on ending it. I was going to have the guy come back as a vampire later. Um, and John's like, that's a great story. Mind if I write that? And Lord Byron's like, yeah, sure. I'm not touching it again. Um, so, uh, John Polidori goes, goes home and writes the vampire and he publishes it and it's like the seminal work. Um, but unfortunately when he publishes it, there's some kind of misunderstanding with the publisher. And when it's published, it's, it's credited as a story by Lord Byron. And Lord Byron's like, I didn't write this. And John Polidori is like, he didn't write this. I wrote this. Like, yeah, he gave me the framework, but I wrote the story. Um, and eventually it was, it was credited properly. But I just think that that's such a neat, like, there's all of these connections to like little things. And I thought that was so cool. Um, in addition, just like one last little thing um, that I learned recently, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm clearly, I'm on a vampire kick right now. Um, but this just like fun factoid that I learned recently uh, in, in regards to weird publishing stuff in vampire literature. Um, so when Dracula uh, was being published, I think I, sh I should have double checked. I wasn't planning on telling the story when I wrote all my notes. So I didn't double check. I have to, I should have fact checked this, but I think it's Iceland. Uh, it could be a different country. I don't know, but it was being trans, I think into Icelandic. Um, and when they did this, they hired somebody who, I don't know. I don't know if he just didn't care, but <laughs> he, instead of translating Dracula, he read Dracula, um, and, uh, he decided, that's nice, I can do it better. <laughs> um, and so he, like, punched it up. He made it, like, he, he did, like, a Hollywood reboot of Dracula, and he published that in Icelandic instead of the original text of Dracula translated into Icelandic, um, or whatever the language is. Um, I apologize. I don't know much about that region of the world. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they wrote, um, he had Bram Stoker, uh, write a, a foreword for the Icelandic edition. And so it was this, this new foreword that he wrote for the Icelandic edition. And, um, it was years later. So this, this, um, Dracula was published in the late 1800s, like 1880-ish, I want to say. These are more things that I should have looked up, um, <laughs> and taken notes on. But anyway, uh, so... He, uh, so Dracula was, was done then, and I, I imagine that this, I should have checked this, but the, the translation was probably published not too long after that. I don't know. Um, but it wasn't until the, like, 1980s that, like, <laughs> um, like, Bram Stoker 
scholars uh, discovered this new foreword that had been written for the for the original Icelandic edition. And they found this foreword and they were like, whoa, cool, new writing from Byron. We have this new foreword from him. But nobody looked at the book. Like, they looked at this new foreword and they translated it into English, but they didn't read the book. So they still didn't know. And it wasn't until like 2014 that they went back and looked at the the original Icelandic edition. I don't know if it, if this if this version survived into subsequent publications, but they it wasn't until 2014 that they looked back at the original Icelandic edition and realized this isn't Dracula. This is a totally different story. <laughs> um so <laughs> that's just that's my that's my car ramble for the day, I guess. Don't expect this to become a regular thing. Um, I was so... I read the the, just the the summary of The Vampire, and I was so charmed by it, and I was so charmed by the story of its publication, and, like, the misaccreditation of... the misaccre miscrediting of the author. I was so charmed by this whole narrative that I, I've been, like, obsessing over it all day, um, I ended up getting the audiobook. It's only like an hour long. Um, it's, it's actually, it's a real treat and I re definitely recommend it. Um, there's a lot of just like fun, weird, funny moments in it. So definitely check it out. Uh, this video has gone on way too long for something that's not going to be edited. Um, so I hope that someone enjoyed this. Uh, have a wonderful day. I apologize that I have no makeup and my hair looks like shit. Bye! <laughs>